There's a good chance that you've seen some of the impressive YouTube videos of Pakistani foundrymen casting aluminum using molasses bonded sand. In this video, I'm just going to cover the basics and make a small casting. Hi, I'm David Wimberly. Welcome to Groucho's Garage. In January of 2020, I saw this video, a foundryman in a very simple shop easily reproducing a complex ring gear. I recommend that you check out the aluminum casting videos on two channels, Wild Things and Master Eye. You'll learn a lot about working with molasses bonded sand. If you've done any traditional metal casting, you'll find that this sand is different. It sort of crawls because it's bonded with molasses. It's not very strong, but it's tough, easy to work with, and the ingredients are readily available. You probably know that metal casting is dangerous. Before starting any casting project, find out how to do it safely. Unfortunately, I can't recommend that you follow the lead of the Pakistanis in this regard. The sand I use has two ingredients, dry washed sand and blackstrap molasses. By weight, the mixture is seven parts molasses to 100 parts sand. All you'll need to prepare a small batch of sand is a container and something like a tablespoon to mix it with. First, mix all of the molasses with one third of the sand and then mix in the remaining sand. Getting the moisture content right is critical. If the humidity is low, you can just spread the sand out and let it dry. Otherwise, you may have to dry part of the sand in an oven. When you squeeze a handful of molding sand, it should leave very little on your palm. The powder that keeps molding sand from sticking to things is called parting compound. Commercial parting is available, but I've found that table sugar ground in a blender works well and doesn't seem to dilute the sand. You can also use powdered ginger or turmeric. The open boxes that hold the sand mold are called flasks. The Pakistanis use steel flasks, but ordinary wooden flasks work fine. The Pakistanis also use steel crucibles. These are easy to find or fabricate. You shouldn't have any trouble coming up with some makeshift tools for ramming up a mold. There are lots of ways to melt aluminum. In Pakistan, the typical furnace is just a refractory lined pit that has a forced air inlet near the bottom and a lid. The fuel is usually charcoal. I plan to make a series of videos explaining this process more thoroughly. In the meantime, let's ram up a mold and pour a casting. We start with a flask which has two halves, the upper half the cope and the lower half the drag. We set the cope aside and invert the drag and then set the drag aside. Next we place the pattern, in this case a beautifully drafted cast iron wing nut with the hole filled and dust it with parting. Then we place the inverted drag. Here comes the sand. You get some idea of the texture. I'll be dumping it in and then consolidating it with my fingers. Your fingers are the best tool for this because you need to get the sand packed around the pattern and into the corners of the flask. So we've done the first layer. Now we're continuing to add sand and we'll add it up until we've got to the top. Now I am ramming it up, adding some more sand to top it off and then compressing the whole mass with the side of the rammer screeding it off. Once it's screeded off, I'll compress it a little more and then brush it off. And then roll the whole thing to compress the material just a little more. I've got to turn the drag over. So I'm thinking about using that board. I could have used both the top and bottom board, but I decided the mold would be strong enough without it. We've got to be able to remove the pattern and we can't do it like this. So I'm making these divots and uh, 
that will allow the pattern to come out without destroying the mold. And once the divots are made, the sand should be compressed and consolidated, and then the loose material blown off and then dusted with parting so that the sand in the top half of the mold won't stick. Once it's parted, we can add the top half, the cope. Now we're ready to place the combination sprue and riser. This is smaller at the bottom so that as I add sand, it will tend to rise up. So you'll see as I add sand in this somewhat tedious process that uh, I'm holding the riser and sprue in place and just slowly making sure that everything is packed around both the sprue and riser and into the edges of the flask so that the entire mold is nice and firm. So we've got one layer in, we're gonna add another layer of sand and repeat the same procedure. Now the riser is locked in place. We continue to add sand and to pack it in with our fingers and it's getting pretty close to the top now. Since it's mounded up there, I'm able to compress it with the side of the rammer and now ram it a bit. And once that's done, I'll be scraping it in from the sides to get it off the edges there and consolidating it some more with the edge of the rammer. And next I'll check it for hardness and then add just a little more. This probably wasn't necessary and roll that in from the corners with this small roller. In order to get the combination sprue and riser out, I wiggle it around a bit and it, it should come right out. And it does. Now I want to make a little funnel shaped depression. So I'm gonna scrape out some sand around that forming a chamfer. And in doing that, I loosen the sand a little bit. So after I've done this, I will compact it with my fingers a little bit. And in doing this, I'll raise the sand up just a bit. So I'll hit it with a roller. So when I invert it, it'll sit flat. That's good. Now we squeeze at the bottom, lift it off and we're in. Now the pattern has to come out in order to make a casting. So we'll wrap it slightly. And once we've wrapped it, we're going to sort of invert it and slam it down. You couldn't do that with conventional foundry sand. Anyway, the pattern comes out nicely. There's a little loose sand there that will have to be blown out and we're ready for reassembly. So here we go, putting the cope in place. There's only one way it goes. Now it's ready to receive some molten aluminum. I'll push the dross back with a dry piece of wood and then pour the first mold and having rammed up two of these, the second mold. After the metal has had some time to solidify, I'm ready to remove the casting from the mold. First, I remove the cope. And after that, I dump the drag. I'll remove the casting and scrape off any good sand that still sticks to it. After it has sat for five minutes or so and is fully solidified, the carburized sand that coats it can easily be knocked off without harming the casting. So the first casting is now being revealed and you'll soon see the second casting as well. And that is how to cast aluminum with molasses bonded sand. I've done my best to keep this video short. So there's lots of material for future videos. I'll try to give you all the information you'll need to make your own castings as quickly as I can, and I'll respond to anyone who leaves a comment. Thanks for watching, and may the swarf be with you. I've got two things to say. This camera really makes me look old, and I've revised this script so many times that I'll be happy if I get one view for each revision.